Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, where I strive to inform, encourage, and motivate you to achieve your educational goals by helping you gain admission into health-related undergrad and graduate programs. And today is all about getting into medical school, specifically discussing steps to becoming an anesthesiologist, what they do, and why I chose that field. I, don't get me started. So first, what do anesthesiologists actually do? Now this is a broad <laughs> answer, but basically anesthesiologists are physicians who are responsible for the evaluation and monitoring of patients before surgery, during surgery, and after surgery. And if you hear the terms preoperative, perioperative, and postoperative, that's exactly what that means before surgery, during surgery, and after surgery. Now what they have to evaluate prior to surgery is if the patient is a good surgical candidate, as well as what type of management will they have to provide in order to ensure appropriate sedation, pain management, and hemodynamic stability. And hemodynamic stability is basically good heart rate, good blood pressure, all of their vitals are normal and within appropriate ranges. Now, why is this important? Because people have to undergo surgery all of the time, right? But it would be crazy if we had to have surgery without anesthesia. It would be crazy if, you know, our bodies were put through surgery without the pain being medically managed. So post-operative care is important as well because Patients need to be monitored as the anesthetics and, and everything kind of wears off. Um, not every patient is just gonna like wake up like that from anesthesia and be fine. A lot of patients, it, it really depends on a lot of different things. Uh, too, too detailed to kind of go into right now, but every patient is different and their response and recovery from anesthesia will be different. So a part of anesthesia care is actually monitoring the patients post-operatively until they're ready to either be discharged from the hospital or return to their room if they are staying in the hospital. Anesthesia also has subspecialties that you can pursue by completing additional training, what they call fellowships uh, within anesthesia if you would like to go into those uh, fields and specifically focus on those patients. Some of the most common ones are cardiac anesthesia, neural anesthesia, obstetric anesthesia, critical care is a big one. Right now is the most competitive to actually land is pain management. Um, what better doctor to go into a pain management field, right? <laughs> but uh, that's a very popular one. It's very hard to actually get into. Uh, but that is another opportunity as an anesthesiologist. And then also pediatric anesthesia. The job is kind of in the name. So cardiac is uh, heart related, chest related stuff. Neuro, obviously neuro spine stuff. Uh, obstetric would be like um, women who are giving birth and maybe you know want an epidural or something like that. Critical care, like I said, is the ICU setting. And then pediatric, obviously anesthesia provided to children. Next, let's talk about the steps to becoming an anesthesiologist. Um, this part is actually very helpful to anybody who wants to just become a doctor in general because the steps are the exact same. So you go to a four-year university, get a bachelor's degree. Some people complete it sooner. It just depends. If you graduate high school with college credits already, you may graduate college early. So three to four years, let's just put it like that. And then you go to medical school for four years as well near your third and fourth year of being a medical student, you need to kind of start structuring your application that targets anesthesiology as a career choice. Um, and what I mean by that is just like an undergrad where you have to do research and do volunteering and you know get shadowing experience or whatever in order to get into medical school, it's the same game in medical school to get into residency. You wanna get those letters of recommendations, you wanna do research, you wanna get as much exposure to the field as you can so that the residency programs that you apply to say, oh yeah, this is a perfect candidate for our program, let's give them an interview. So that's the same thing you do in medical school, right? You try to do research as much as you can, experience in the field, do as many electives as possible, get to know the program director at your home institution Get to know the assistant directors at your home institution. Even if you don't want to stay there, you want to get to know them and you want to work with them so that they can write you letters of recommendation that will help you get into the anesthesia residency of your choice. You have to complete four years of residency and then you will sit for your boards to be completely finished. 
and official, right? Um, the way anesthesiology works right now, as far as residency is concerned, is that you either attend a four-year program that has an intern year built into that program to where you apply one time to one program, or you complete what we call a one plus three, where you do a separate application to one year programs like a internal medicine prelim, a surgical prelim, or a transitional year, which is what I'm completing, a one year transitional year program, and then you transition right into a three year anesthesia program. Either way it goes is four years, either four years combined at one place or four years with the first year being at one place and the other three being at another place, or you may get lucky like me and do all four years at the same place anyway, just split up into two different programs. So that is how anesthesia works for residency. Once you finish your four years of residency in uh, anesthesiology, then you are able to either be a general anesthesiologist and go make your bags, you know, and start living your life, or you can choose to do a fellowship and have a subspecialty in some of the areas that I mentioned earlier in this video. Quickly, I wanted to share with you guys why I chose anesthesia. I think that when you get to medical school, you kind of like start shadowing other doctors or you start working with the medicine team or surgery team or anesthesia team or whatever team it is, you kind of start to like realize what type of person you are. And then you kind of like find your little group that you're similar to and I felt like everybody in anesthesia was like super down to earth super chill like I'm a chill person I like to have fun I know when to be serious but I also know when to like take a break and like relax and you know I'm not super detail oriented blah 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 I didn't want to be in a clinic like anesthesia was a good fit for me I felt like I fit in and I really enjoyed the people that I was working with. So that was the number one reason that kind of drew me towards anesthesia. What really sealed the deal for me was the fact that I actually wanted to be in the OR, but I didn't want to do the surgery. So <laughs> the next best thing is anesthesia. And I actually appreciate and love the science behind anesthesia. I think it is just completely just breathtaking how you can like administer a drug to somebody and then within five seconds, they're just like, you know, I mean, there's science on the 10th degree, right? I'm just so intrigued by it. I love it. I like how you just give a medication and then what you did works instantly. You don't have to follow up in three weeks to see if your uh, management or your intervention works, right? So you get that instant gratification, which I love about anesthesia. I saw it as an opportunity to make a really nice salary and I kind of had the opportunity to kind of work how I want to work. You can be an anesthesiologist and work buku hours and make bukus of money or you can like work like a regular job like eight to five in an academic setting monday through friday maybe a call here and there maybe a weekend here and there and make at least like 280 to three hundred thousand dollars a year and i'm cool with that right <laughs> i am okay with that uh and so that was another reason why i chose anesthesia and then i would say the last reason why i chose anesthesia is because i'm a very like hands-on, get it done, fast-paced type person. And if you've heard anything about anesthesia, they say it's 97, 98% relaxing, but then it's like 3%, oh sh things about to get real, you know? And so I'm about that action and like, I love to like be put to the test. I work very well under pressure. And so I felt that it was just very fitting to who I was as a person. Like I want my job to where I can like be relaxed and I'm not like on edge. But if I gotta like handle things, I can handle things because that's just who I am as a person. So all of that wrapped up is the reason why I chose anesthesia. I'll have another video that talk about what I initially wanted and how I ended up changing into something else. Uh, but I don't want to make this video too long, but I hope this video was informative to you guys. As always, ask me questions in the comments, okay? DM me on Instagram. If you have any concerns about what I talked about in this video, let me know. Also, if you have any other requests, continue to let me know what you guys want me to talk about. I'm happy to talk about anything that you feel would be helpful. Thanks, guys.